Link and cashback code in the description. When this is my calling, flow is so appalling. My phone off and she calling. I'm like, yeah, what it do? Pent half man, what, what it is going on, everybody? Welcome back today, guys, to the channel. Back here on some eye racing for a third week in a row, man. So big thank you to everybody that has been showing their support. If you guys do want to keep seeing it, don't forget to slap that like button. Today I got a couple races to show you guys. We got a lot of action going down and even okay. a first place finish, man. So hold on Full to that. We pack. did qualify number one pole position. As you guys can see right now, we're driving the Motor City Chevrolet car, man. We're driving Cole Trickle's car from Days of Thunder. You guys know I love Days of thunder we're here at charlotte motor speedway and i love this track it's a very technical track you got to be able to hold your line and uh not give it up and uh Ooh, sometimes you know you can get past very baby. fast on here we she did move down to second place now but i wasn't a big fan of that considering i'd have to hold that outside line but it also gave me the opportunity to kind of fit in and that's kind of what i did this okay, race was i didn't want to push it too much and i kind of wanted to just kind of wait in the back a bit wait to the later laps in the race to really try to put a move on everything Everybody, uh, you know, if I was I even able to. Now, this man seems to get out a little bit ahead on this start. Green, green, green. Deep road is now open. We got a 20 lap here on Charlotte Motor Speedway. Street stock. I do believe it's an open class, so anybody can be in here, including rookies. I am a D class at the moment. I did not get enough to qualify for the next class up so i need to do a few things i have the proper sr rating but uh we do have to complete a few more races and time trials before we can actually get our next level so i'm hoping to do that moving forward for these next couple of weeks and a lot of you guys did let me know in the comment section last week about week 13 being kind of a practice week in that sense so Jake, amongst a handful of people, let me know, and he goes, Slap, I love that you're doing iRacing now. Got me back into the channel in a major way. I have a bunch of tips if you want them. We're in week 13 right now, so all the official ranked third series will come back on Monday at 7 p.m. So it's already officially started, but I didn't know that that was going to be a bye week, which kind of makes sense because there were so many unofficial dirt races happening. I was just... I. I had no idea. I really didn't. So I'm really glad that they're up and running. I have done a few of them since then. I'm waiting on a few tunes right now. And actually, last episode that I did, I had Chase Swafford, very, very prestigious iRacing driver. He actually messaged me and asked if I wanted some help on tuning and or paints. He let me know about TradingPaints.com where I could download pretty much a whole bunch of tunes and just throw on the car. Very, very easy, simplistic to do. And uh, that's what we did for today, man. I'm actually driving the paint right off of Trading Paints. And these guys are doing exactly the same thing up there. Swapping paint, man. They almost lost it. We have right now three cars up ahead. We're in fourth position right now, sitting comfortably. I mean, fifth place is about a second and a half back there, uh, which is not a lot, but it's enough to give you that kind of that good feeling. You don't see anybody in your rear view mirror. There's no pressure in that sense. And we're gonna try to make a move here on number two. Now, unfortunately, things are gonna get a little bit hectic later on in this race, and uh, we'll have to wait and see. But all I'm saying though, the man's lagging the entire race. Unfortunately. You know, sometimes you get a race where, you know, somebody's lagging more than usual and you have to kind of compensate for that. I found a lot of this race was, you know, being behind this car and trying to just make that move and get by him. And the biggest thing was just being confident enough to really trust that inside line. And right here, we're going to try to do so, get the run on the inside. Of course, we don't have a lot of room right now, so i got to let off a bit. He's going to go ahead, fit right back in there. Again, I'm very, very timid on this race. I don't want to cause an accident. I'm sitting pretty good. Fourth place, zero contacts at the moment. We're seven laps in here out of 20. And again, he's going to start hopping down the back stretch, man. I mean, this is like, you know, low rider status out here. But uh, we're going to go ahead and move into third place, push that eight car out of the way on the high side. And that's one of the biggest things that I've been learning is really to hold your line on this game. You really need to be able to hold what you're doing, be confident in your driving, now, P4 is actually going to get a little bit of air on me, and he didn't make any contact, but it did show up on the top there, meaning that he did get real close. It got me a little bit loose. We held it. No problems at all. We're going to try to move ahead on this P1 and P2. Now, these guys definitely, obviously, they know what they're doing. These guys are in a good position, and this is why I love the street stock, as of right now, anyways, just because I don't have tunes for, you know, the NASCARs or, you know, any of the dirt ovals and stuff like that, but, you know, everybody's at the same advantage, and it's about just trying to pick those lines and have the best line possible. Now, these guys, 
all over the road right now, man. This is looking like Talladega Nights all over again. We got cars road. swerving up here, trying to protect it. We have that car getting a little look bit outside, and look at this. He saves it. He saves it, thankfully. But again, though, he's getting in the way almost. He just seems really laggy, a little bit slower, and we're going to have to you know, try to make our way cleanly by him. And that's one of the biggest things that I found in this race was that it was just it was so tough trying to get by the number two of the Jack Daniels, man. I don't know if he had a few to drink or not, but I'm just trying to stay focused on what I'm doing. If you guys are wondering what I'm using right now for the rig, it's a Fanatic CSL Elite package. I got the full shifter, the pedals, got the Wheel Stand Pro rig as well to that beautiful chassis that they sent me a couple weeks ago. Now right here, we're on the high side. I'm getting a little bit more confident. I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of staying in the back, man. I can see P1 and P2 slowly leaving ahead because this guy is just not fast enough for what I'm trying to accomplish right now. And this is kind of when I'm, you know, I'm starting to really kind of say, okay, you know what? We're on lap 16 right now. Something's got to happen. And, well, it did. Check this out. Clearing side. Car outside. Still there. Man, that's a bad leg, buddy. I'm sorry. That's just a combination, like I said, bad leg, you know, I didn't really want to lift too much on there considering I had a guy right behind me. I mean, he's right on that draft as hard as can be, so I don't understand why he was going so much slower than I was, but the leg kind of got pushed aside, took a times four on the incidences, wasn't really too happy about that considering we had a clean race all the way up until now. And we're here on lap 17. We're going to fast forward this, hitting lap 18. The number nine car trying to make a move down on the inside for P3. And unfortunately, uh, he's going to try to slowly make it in there. And we're going to keep high on there. Hold that. I don't know if you guys have seen that. The tires, as you're getting into the race, we're on lap 18. The tires are definitely well worn. And you guys could see that coming out of that corner. How to make you know a slight correction to save it. I've been really learning how to drive these cars. Especially when the tires are cooked and I mean it's all about just the, you know the slight movements with the wheel not snapping it once you get out of it But just you know allowing the rubber to really just flex with the road and I know it's really stupid to even say that about a game But I racing is more than a game and it's a simulation and you got to treat it as such now We're here right now lap 19 coming around to the final lap. Take a look at these guys The next car's the leader the Car outside. Holy the outside. shit! Fucking pathetic piece of shit. One more lap to win. Okay, you are the leader. What the fuck was that, leader? The AK controller is fucking car. Ten smack into me and ruin my race. Report him. Report. I ain't no snitch. <laughs> I ain't no snitch. Eleven years uh, eight years Jesus wow, pulling the win. I ain't a snitch, but what a race! Not. I ain't not. Yeah. Woo! You okay. won. Awesome job. First race Holy shit, using I almost died. the Motor City oh, Chevrolet man. car from Days of Thunder, man. Go Cole out Stay there. The P1 and P2 taking each other out to uh, let P3 slide in and take the dub. But that's all you need to do sometimes, man. Be patient. Let it happen. Oh and sometimes the race will just play out to where you need it to be. And exactly right there, we missed him by millimeters. I mean, I it, it doesn't get any closer than that. It really doesn't. We're going to take one more look here in third person. But... Uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway taking home a dub in the final lap. The man just could not control his car, and uh, he just lost it on there. Unfortunately, as well, too, number two, he got bumped out of the way, unfortunately, and we took uh, four incidences on that. Like I said, we get a nice little uh, third person here on the TV cam. And, uh, yeah, just we got under him. It looked like, you know, he kind of disappeared for a second. I didn't really know what was happening. And, yeah, he's out of there. I'm so sorry on that, man. I did dip my toes in a little bit of the dirt oval at the U.S. International Speedway with the street stocks. Had a brand new mellow yellow paint job on there, courtesy of TradingPaints.com. And obviously, if you guys don't know, another Days of Thunder paint job, right? I had to do it, man. I love that movie. Love the paints that that's, you know, that's available to be downloaded up there. And huge thank you to everybody that does do that for free, it looks like, right? I mean, there's no cost in these paints, so it's really cool that people do take the time to allow people to have some custom designs out there. 
But, uh, I mean, this was nothing too crazy. It was just a matter of driving consistently and just being, you know, aware of what was happening. And right at the very start of this race, we're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. We didn't place too well in the actual qualifying. I've still yet to find that perfect lap on here. And, I mean, the dirt okay, ovals are probably one of the green. hardest things to do, I feel, on this game, considering, you know, there's so much technicality in your driving, your gas, your brake, your lines, being able to control the slide as you're doing it, and you also be fast in that sense. You don't want to be sideways around the track, because obviously it's slow, but sometimes you need to be to throw it in to get that right line. It's a tricky combination, especially on this game, on a full rig, you know, feeling the force feedback, just shaking, feeling all the dirt and the rocks right here. Now, this race, it's another 20 lapper. Just trying to be consistent. We already... Go low, go low. Clear inside. I, go I don't know low. what to say. We got lucky, okay? We got real damn lucky. We went through the man as he was being taken out. I don't know if it was, you know, a precaution to say, hey, don't worry, man. Your cold trickle. Just move on by, right? I don't know, but we're going to continue this here. I didn't take any damage. I didn't take any contacts from that I know of. And we're here right now in P7 trying to just make our way up the pack consistently, right? I mean, we've got a lot of drivers up here. We're in rookie. Anything can happen. And that's what I love about this game is that you need to be aware of that. I mean, you could be sitting, say, in last place and, you know, still maybe even make it up to the podium, you know, if everybody does crash on that last lap. Very rare, right? But if you're in the rookie class, you never know what could happen. I've been trying to make my way out of there, but I have been noticing once we do get in to those higher-up races, it's, it's almost impossible to move out of your position because everybody's just so good they're so consistent that uh you know you're almost in that crossroads where you're trying to just you know become a little bit better to be able to make your way up the pack but i do want to start getting involved in the nascars very soon maybe even doing some talladega uh you know maybe some atlanta i don't know i know atlanta is very tough very slippery track if you guys have not watched any of uh, Empty Box's videos on that game, he did a full VR episode on there. I've never been able to actually shout him out because I don't really, you know, do a lot of eye racing. But I've been watching his channel for a long time. He has a lot of really good points on his videos. He's very knowledgeable in what he's doing right there. We just had to uh, dodge an accident. Thank you, we did that. But I will leave his channel down below for you guys to check out. He posts full races. And he does the big boy races, man. I mean, like I said, the man is full simulation. I've been following him now for a long time. And he posts, you know, anywhere from 150 laps or so. I mean, races could be about two hours long. But the man's good. You learn a lot from his channel. There's a lot of really good information that you guys can learn from there. So I will leave that down below if you guys want to check it out. Right there, we finally got the pass on the number 10. And, I mean, like I said, you can slowly start picking cars off if you know what you're doing. You know, how to hold that line, become a little bit faster every single lap. And that's what I've been really trying to be consistent on in these last couple of days playing. Now right here, we're coming around to lap 19 on the final lap of this race. We're currently sitting in P5, which is very respectable considering we started off and I do believe ninth position or eighth or so. So pretty good starting to finish position. All we need to do right now is hold it. I'm trying to maybe get ahead of these guys, but again, I don't want to push it. I don't want to take myself out in the same sense and really you have a gap this size, the only way that you're going to pull on these guys if they crash themselves. And that's really the only way to go about it. So I just wanted to be really clean, just hold it down, and bring home another checkered flag. And that's, I mean, like I said last episode, I would rather finish a race with zero incidences in last than finish a race, say, in fourth place with four incidences. So just keep that in mind if you guys are starting out on this game. We're going back right now to Charlotte Motor Speedway with, again... Cold trickle, right? I mean, you guys got to know. It's a cold trickle day today, man. Cold trickle versus the world pretty much out here in iRacing. Now, we're going to be pulling off a very fast qualifying lap here. You get two laps to go. This is our second flying lap past onto the checkered flag. And right there, finishing off with a 37.395. And uh, that's good enough for first place on the pole. So, we're actually going to go ahead and take a pole position here for this race. Again, it's scary, man, but it's not that bad on Charlotte. I mean, you can really hold the entire corner around here flat out and not really have to worry about too much. So as long as you're holding your line, you're okay. Good luck. The pipe car is in. Green, green, green. Car outside. Still there. Clear. Still 
So, we're here on the first corner right now, right? I mean, we got through, not bad. Everyone else is doing okay. But we're going to make a little mistake, and we're going to let this number 15 uh, push us out to the outside here on this corner. And this was a mistake that I definitely learned from because we got pushed back a little bit. 15 is going to open it up for number 9 as well, and also number 1 trailing back there in 4. So... It was a thing that I was sitting there and I knew it. As soon as it started happening, I'm like, shit, man, I need that inside line. But, I mean, there's really no way to get back to it. I got forced out early and I won't be making that mistake twice. Man. I'm going to try to hold my line, allow them not to try to get that pass if I need to. Maybe drive in front of them a little bit. But, again, you know, you don't want to cause the accident. So I was just trying to just be the better guy in this sense. We're early still, lap 2 out of 20. Go ahead, man, take it out. Now, we are too wide coming through here. It's going to get a little bit dicey, man. Take a look at this. Shit. It was not good. I was just mainly focused on getting back on the road. Uh, I missed two huge accidents while spinning out. I recovered, thankfully. And we're here on lap 6. Number 12 ends up hitting the wall really? on me, coming back out. I kind of didn't know where he was going. I froze and just, boom, right into him. So I thought I was going to go a little bit higher up on the track, and then he kind of stopped. I was stuck there, just a deer in headlights, and uh, put him right into the air. And right here, you guys can see me coming around, and yeah. Um, <laughs> he went pretty high into the sky, man. Now, we're going to take another look here at this accident that uh, just happened before that. Like I said, it was, you know, a tough mistake. I don't know if... Say I was at fault or the number three car, sorry, was behind me, the monster. Um, it was just, it was a tough situation to be in. You know, we were both going high. Um, he got a little bit into me and then brought him out to the number 11 car. And then the 11 car went into me. And it was just, it was a bad pileup situation. But I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Who is at fault for this wreck? I feel like I said, he got a little bit aggressive on me. And... Just, you know, Rubbin's racing at the end of the day, man. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for coming around for another episode of iRacing. Been really enjoying this. Hopefully you guys have been as well, too. And look at this recovery right now, man. Absolutely stellar recovery to get his back in the race. But, as you guys know, uh, we totaled it just a couple laps later, man. Not the greatest finish. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm out. Peace.